1972 and the rivalry between Lotus's Emerson Fittipaldi, Tyrrell's Jackie Stewart and Ferrari's Jackie Ix and Clay Regazzoni was at its most intense. The Formula One championship took in 12 rounds. The way was open for a famous home win at Le Mans and Can-Am was in its pomp with massively powerful sports cars rumbling stateside. The closing stages of the Monte Carlo rally and one of the ill-fated Alpine Renaults which looked certain to be placed until they dropped out with mechanical trouble. The car that was to win, a Lancia Fulvia, driven by Sandro Munari and Mario Manucci of Italy. The Datsun 240Z of Rano Altonen and Jean Todd finished third. Munari and Manucci slide through the Alpine stages. The second place getters, Gérard Larousse and Jean-Claude Peramont in a Porsche. The rally ended on the quayside at Monte Carlo. Ten of the 34 cars competing in the final trial didn't complete the course. There was an enthusiastic reception for Sandro Munari and Mario Manucci, the first Italians to win the Monte Carlo. Reigning world champion Jackie Stewart won the Argentinian Grand Prix, Denny Halm was second and Jackie X third. Round two was at the Kyle Army circuit near Johannesburg for the South African Grand Prix. Ronnie Peterson was back with March. Henri Pescarolo of France, number 21, in a Frank Williams entered March 721. Tyrrell's Jackie Stewart took pole, beating Ferrari's Clay Regazzoni and Emerson Fittipaldi's Lotus by a few tenths of a second. The Lotus 72s of Fittipaldi and Dave Walker had new black and gold livery. Lotus had abandoned work on their turbine car. Tyrrell's Francois Sever lined up eighth for the 300km 79 lap race. The cars rolled into their grid positions. Emerson Fittipaldi was first away, but didn't hold on to the lead for more than a lap. He was caught by motorbike ace Mike Halewood in a Surtees, and then by Jackie Stewart. Halewood was stopped by a rear suspension failure. McLaren's Denny Holm was within striking distance of the lead. Fittipaldi was in second place behind Stewart, and Holm seemed content to stay behind them, with his McLaren showing signs of overheating. Despite slick tyres and aerofoils, four-wheel drifts were still in vogue. On lap 45, Stewart suffered a gearbox failure and was out, leaving Fittipaldi leading with Halm right on his tail. Then the Kiwi took over, holding it all the way to the chequered flag at an average speed of 183 kilometres an hour. Fittipaldi was safe in second, while Chris Amon dropped back in the sole matra, allowing new McLaren driver Peter Revson into third. Denny Halm now led the World Championship with 15 points. Many of the Formula One teams travelled to the Interlagos circuit in Sao Paulo for the non-championship Brazilian Grand Prix. Helmut Marco and the BRM, and home favourite Emerson Fittipaldi. At that time, regulations required a demonstration race to be held before a Grand Prix was admitted to the World Championship. Emerson Fittipaldi started from pole and led for most of the race until put out with suspension trouble with only five laps to go. Argentinian Carlos Reutemann, driving for Brabham, took over in front with Ronnie Peterson's march close behind. Peter Gethin had a short race in the BRM, retiring with throttle trouble. Carlos Reutemann beat Ronnie Peterson by a minute and a half, with Emerson's brother Wilson Fittipaldi third, Helmut Marco fourth for BRM and Dave Walker fifth for Lotus. The race was a success, and Brazil was deemed ready to host a World Championship Grand Prix in 1973.
Thomas and Fittipaldi bounced back to win in Spain from Jackie Ickes and Clay Regazzoni, despite his onboard extinguisher going off. In a very wet Monaco Grand Prix, Jean-Pierre Beltois and the BRM P160B powered into the lead ahead of Jackie Ix and Emerson Fittipaldi, despite starting from the second row. And the Frenchman drove the race of his life, flinging the BRM around the Principality. On lap five, Regazzoni went up the escape road at the chicane, taking Fittipaldi and Ix with him. Even Jackie Stewart, usually a master in wet conditions, was lapped twice. Stewart held third until the closing laps when Fittipaldi overtook him. Regazzoni spun on some oil and clouted the barriers. Conditions were so bad that the winning speed of 100 kilometers an hour was the slowest at Monaco for 20 years. Only one of the 25 starters, Jackie X, finished on the same lap as Beltoise. It was the Frenchman's only Grand Prix victory and the last for BRM. Emerson Fittipaldi was now leading with 19 points, X had 16 and Holm 15. Graham Hill and Jackie Ix were among 25 drivers making their final preparations before the Belgian Grand Prix at the new Nivelle circuit near Brussels. Jackie Stewart was missing due to a stomach ulcer. Jean-Pierre Beltois was ready to repeat his Monaco heroics. Emerson Fittipaldi was fastest qualifier ahead of Clay Regazzoni and Denny Halm. Francois Sever shared row two with Jackie Ix. Lap six, Fittipaldi had passed Regazzoni and then Ix. Both Ferraris were to drop out, Regazzoni because of a crash, which didn't hurt the Swiss driver, but ended the race for him. Chris Amon was running third in the Matra. Ix went out with fuel injection problems on lap 47. Leader Fittipaldi passed the certes of Adamich. Denny Halm moved into third behind Sever when Chris Amon had to pit for more fuel. Fittipaldi won the 85 lap race with an average speed of almost 190 kilometers an hour. The Brazilian's second Grand Prix success gave him 28 points in the Drivers' Championship, nine ahead of Denny Halm. French hopes at the Le Mans 24-hour race took an early bruising when the Matra, driven by Jean-Pierre Beltois and Chris Amon, dropped out with engine failure after just three laps. This caused consternation in the Matra pits because six years of work was aimed almost entirely at winning this one race. The battle for the lead became one between the matras of Francois Sever and Harden Ganley and Henri Pascarolo teamed with Graham Hill, three Alfa Romeo T33s and the yellow Lola T280 DFE team led by Joe Bonnier. After two hours, Huge de Fielon in the other Lola stopped with gearbox trouble and Bonnier, Larousse and Van Lennep dropped back after bodywork repairs. It had been more than 20 years since a French team had won the Grand Prix d'Endurance and the French government had poured millions of francs into Matra's efforts. The Matra MS660 of Jean-Pierre Jabouy and David Hobbs. The Alpha T33 of Vic Elford and Helmut Marko retired, as did the Porsche 908 of Lonnier and Touroul. Pascarolo prepares for his next drive. Graham Hill took the lead from the Ganley Sever car around midnight, although the lead changed between the blue mattress. Later in the race, the Jabouille Hobbs mattress stopped with transmission trouble. At dawn, the mattress 670s swapped their positions again. 
Bonnier's Lola T280 was still there with a healthy DFV V8. The Formula One inspired Lola was running fast in the early morning. But at 8.30, joy turned to gloom throughout the race when Joe Bonnier collided with the Ferrari Daytona of Switzerland's Florian Vetch. The veteran Swiss Bonnier died instantly, although Vetch got away with burns and shock. Howden Gandhi was leading when he was hit in the tail by a Chevrolet Corvette. This gave the lead to Pescarolo and Hill. By lunchtime, they'd widened their advantage over the nearest alpha of Nina Vaccarella and Andrea de Adamic to seven laps. A pit stop for bodywork repairs cost the alpha third place, and it went to the older Porsche 908L, driven by Reinhold Joost, Michel Weber and Mario Cassoni. Hill and Pescarolo crossed the finish line. They were ten laps ahead of their teammates, Sever and Ganley. This was the first victory for a French car since 1950 and made Graham Hill the first and so far only driver to win the Indianapolis 500, the Le Mans 24 Hours and the Formula One World Championship. Jackie Stewart returned to racing to win the French Grand Prix from Emerson Fittipaldi and Chris Amon. In the British Grand Prix at Brands Hatch, Jackie Ickes took an immediate lead in his Ferrari and held it for the first 45 laps, despite mechanical troubles from lap 5 onwards, which sprayed following drivers with oil. Emerson Fittipaldi and Jackie Stewart were swapping second and third places. Ickes' teammate Clay Regazzoni was missing from the race, having broken his arm playing football. Andrea de Adamic ran out of track in his Surtees, but was pulled out unhurt. On lap 49, Ix slowed with an oil pressure problem, and so the battle for second between Fittipaldi and Stewart became the fight for the lead. The most dramatic and dangerous incident happened when Frenchman Henri Pascarolo's brand new Williams burst into flames in the middle of the track. Officials fought the blaze with the rest of the field flashing past. winner Pescarolo was rescued unharmed. Emerson Fittipaldi raced towards the chequered flag with Stewart less than four seconds behind. 34 points on the JPS Lotus on his way happily in the John Player Trophy. And that is not just a coincidence, it's a very, very deserved victory. Someone else offered Druids. There's Graham Hill's car in the foreground there. Ronnie Peterson's engine cut out at Druids and he crashed into cars abandoned by Francois Sever and Graham Hill. Off the road there, we think, but not significant as Emerson Fittipaldi comes up to take the chequered flag in the British Grand Prix of, and the Grand Prix of Europe of 1972. A great ovation. Fittipaldi was on 43 points, the stewards 27. Porsche turbocharged the redundant 917 sports cars and turned them into powerful Can-Am contenders. McLaren was still the team to beat, with Denny Halm and Peter Revson dovetailing their Formula One commitments with the big prize money North American series. Revson started from pole in the Watkins Glen round, but Denny Halm was soon in front in his M20. Running third was George Fulmer in the Porsche. Halm leads Revson in the opening laps. Roger McCaig put his McLaren into the fence. Chasing Fulmer was a hard-charging David Hobbs in the Lola T310. Then came Francois Sever in the bright blue young American racing team McLaren M8F, an odd name given it was a British built car with a French driver. Sever was able to pass Hobbs and Fulmer. Denny Halm led home Peter Revson for a McLaren 1 2. 
This was the last Can-Am race win for McLaren, who had won every championship from 1967 to 1971. Porsche unleashed the 1,000 horsepower plus version of the 917, which helped kill off interest in the series. By the time of the German Grand Prix, Emerson Fittipaldi was well in control of the World Championship. He qualified third, just behind Jackie Stewart and pole sitter Jackie Ix. 240,000 spectators around the 22-kilometer Nordschliefer waited under sunny skies, ideal racing conditions. Ix took the lead while Stewart and Peterson banged wheels as they fought over second. Peterson won out and Stewart dropped to fifth behind Regazzoni and Fittipaldi. Reutemann was sixth. Fittipaldi passed Regazzoni and then Peterson. On lap nine, Peterson spun. Fittipaldi retired when his Lotus developed gearbox trouble, leaving Regazzoni in second. At the start of the last lap, Stewart challenged Regazzoni at Hudsonbach. The two cars touched and Stewart went into the barriers. Fortunately, at such a dangerous circuit, he wasn't injured in the incident. Regazzoni completed the lap to give Ferrari a 1-2 finish and Ronnie Peterson finished third. Grand Prix day this year for the SPC. Ix set a lap record of 7 minutes 13.6 seconds on the 10th time round, an average speed of 189 kilometers an hour. 42 minutes, 12.3 seconds, one... 42, Emerson Fittipaldi retained his championship lead, helped by Stewart and Denny Holmes' non-finishes. And I make it 116.631 miles. Howden Gandhi was fourth for BRM, Brown Redmond fifth for McLaren, and Graham Hill scored a point for Brabham, only his second of the year. The Austrian Grand Prix was round 9 of 12. Emerson Fittipaldi had pole position, but Jackie Stewart raced into the lead ahead of Clay Regazzoni, Fittipaldi and a fast-starting Denny Halm. Regazzoni began having fuel feed problems, but managed to keep Fittipaldi behind him for four laps before losing second place. But Stewart's lead was always in danger, as he had trouble controlling the short wheelbase Tyrrell. On the 25th lap, Fittipaldi slipped past him into the lead. Stewart fell further back as the march of Ronnie Peterson and the McLarens of Denny Halm and Peter Revson moved up. By lap 44, Halm was trailing Fittipaldi by just a second. couldn't close the gap completely and it was the black and gold Lotus of Emerson Fittipaldi that took the chequered flag in Austria. Peterson retired so Peter Revson inherited third place with Mike Halewood fourth, Brian Redmond fifth for McLaren and Graham Hill sixth for Brabham. Fittipaldi now had 52 points with Holm and Stewart on 27. With only three races left, either Holm or Stewart would have to win each event, with Fittipaldi unplaced in each for him to be overtaken. In the Italian Grand Prix, Jackie Stewart had a transmission failure at the start and the rest had to avoid him. Ix took the lead from Regazzoni and Fittipaldi, with Andretti and Amon ahead of Halewood and Halm. With new chicanes installed, slipstreaming was a thing of the past. 
The two Ferraris were able to pull away at the front, but on lap 16, Regazzoni retired when he clipped Carlos Pace's march at the Violone chicane. That left teammate Jackie Ix out in front. All eyes were on Brazil's Emerson Fittipaldi, needing this race to clinch the World Drivers' Championship. Jackie Ix was forced out by engine failure on lap 46. Mario Andretti was the favourite of the Italian crowd, but he lost out when a lengthy pit stop put him a lap behind the leaders. In the end, it was a comfortable victory for Emerson Fittipaldi, with Mike Hale with a career-best second, Denny Halm third and Peter Revson fourth. It was 25-year-old Fittipaldi's fifth Grand Prix victory of the season and the one that clinched the Drivers' Championship for him. He was joined on the podium by five times world champion Juan Manuel Fangio, South America's only other world champion. Jackie Stewart won a wet and foggy Canadian Grand Prix from Peter Revson and Denny Halm. Qualifying for the US Grand Prix at Watkins Glen saw Jackie Stewart fastest with Peter Revson and Denny Halm alongside. Clay Regazzoni was sixth, Mario Andretti tenth. Disappointing results for the Scuderia. Stewart went into the lead with Halm second, but Regazzoni ran into Reutemann and Revson. That allowed Fittipaldi to take third, with newcomer Jody Schechter fourth for McLaren. On lap five, Fittipaldi had to pit because of a slow puncture. Jackie Ix put in a sparkling display, but was destined to finish only fifth. Fittipaldi retired on lap 14 with a broken shock absorber. Francois Sever began a charge, and after passing the Ferraris, he was able to overtake Schechter for third place. At half distance, Sever caught and passed Holm to give Tyrrell a 1 2. Chris Amon finished 15th in his last drive for Matra. Jackie Stewart finished ahead of Francois Sever. The Scottish driver's earnings for the win totaled an impressive $62,000. Team boss Ken Tyrrell joined his drivers on the podium. In the Constructors' Championship, Emerson Fittipaldi won the title for Lotus all by himself. Teammate Dave Walker didn't score a single point all season. Tyrrell was second. Emerson Fittipaldi was the first Brazilian to win the World Championship. From go-karts to world champion took just 10 years, and his example led to a wave of South American drivers from Nelson Piquet to Ayrton Senna, Rubens Barrichello, and Felipe Massa following his path. <laughs>